And our uh, last speaker for this session is Zen Tan. And he's going to tell us about RNA secondary structure um, formation. Hello everyone, so uh, I'm Zhen Tan, a student at Matthews Lab at the Uni University of Rochester. Today I'll talk about the program TurboFo2. Uh, it does the RNA structural alignment and secondary structure prediction using homologs. So I'll begin with some highlighting features in the algorithm and benchmarking results of TurboFo2. Then I'll briefly talk about another project using TurboFo as a platform and giving RNA secondary structure using shape experimental mapping data. So TurboFlow 2 takes the input of homologs and output secondary structures for each of the sequences. And the new feature uh, which I added to the new version TurboFlow 2 is it gives the multiple sequence alignment using the structural information from the homologs. So this flow chart shows the algorithm of it. It begins from the um, homologs, and then it calculates the pairwise alignment by hidden Markov model. Then it calculates the base pairing probability by partition function calculation uh, based on the nearest neighbor model. So a new feature in the TurboFo2 is using the structural information to improve the pairwise alignment through a match score computation. Then it forms a loop after three iterations. It gives the multiple sequence alignment from the pairwise alignment and gives the structural prediction for each sequences. So the match score is showing a structural mapping between any two nucleotides between a pair of sequences. To begin with that, it calculates three components for uh, each of the nucleotides. For example, for this I, it calculates first is the sum of base pair probability of being upstream pair. Second component is the sum of base pair probability of being downstream pair. And third is the probability of being unpaired, which is one minus the other two. So it can calculate the match score between nucleotide I and K in this pair of sequences. So it's the geometric mean of the first components plus the geometric mean of the second components plus 0 0.8 multiplying the geometric mean of the third components plus 0 0.5. So these uh, parameters are get by optimization. Here's an example showing using the mass score to improve the pairwise alignment. So here are two tRNAs, and there's an insertion in the second one. So the, here's the database alignment between the two sequences. Um, the two axes are the index of the nucleotides in the two sequences. And the color is matching with their uh, helix um, here. So the insertion is uh, over here. 
So this heat map shows the alignment probability getting only by hidden Markov model. Um, a light color means the high alignment probability and the darker color means low probability. So we can see that although the three perm end is a perfect aligned, but it's hard to tell where insertion is. But by uh, combining the mass score and hidden Markov model, it correctly uh, predict the insertion and also the, um, the two helix before it. So to measure the uh, accuracy of the alignment and structure prediction, I use sensitivity and PPV. Sensitivity is the fraction of known features that are correctly predicted. And PPV is the fraction of predicted features that are correct. So for alignment, the features are uh, pairwise nucleotide alignment. And for structure prediction, the features are base pairs. So here's the alignment sensitivity and PPV for the family RNAs P. So here, the turbofold 2 is benchmarked with several other uh, leading alignment tools. And the star means their, the difference is significant. So turbofold 2 is um, improvement um, comparing with other tools. And a general trend seen here is that by using more sequences as the input, the accuracy is improved. Here shows the structure sensitivity and PPV. So turbofold 2 has a comparable accuracy with turbofold and shows the substantial improvement comparing with other structure prediction, prediction tools. So the conclusion is that the uh, turbofold 2 can give um, accurate multiple sequence alignment taking the uh, structure information into account. Next, I'll brief talk about um, a project to using shape experimental data to uh, calculate the secondary structure. So we know that um, by using sequence comparison, it can give uh, better structure prediction accuracy comparing single sequence tools. And also it's shown that, um, so by our lab mates, um, by using shape experimental mapping data, it can improve the single sequence structure prediction. So this project is merged these two concepts together to look for synergy. So I give the input of homologs plus the shape data on one of the sequence. And then I find out the average structure accuracy, a uh, structure um, prediction accuracy is improved for the sequences without the shape mapping data. So conclusion is that uh, using shape mapping data can help with the structure prediction for the sequences without shape data. I'd like to thank my advisor David Matthews, and also uh, collaborator uh, Graf Sharma, and also other lab mates. Thank you for listening. the second one? So you asked about the accuracy measurement for the no, alignment. I'm asking aligning M different sequences. So what's your uh -huh. time to aligning like M different sequences? You do it like two by two. Oh, one. yes, yes. So the first question is, um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh, yes. So I feel like it's. Can, uh, can you repeat the question? Please? Yes. Um, so asking about, is it uh, simultaneously aligned and do the structure <laughs> prediction? That's right. So I think my uh, approach is like a merge between the simultaneous one and also the align and structure prediction. It do a, like a loop of iteration. It begin from the alignment, then do the structure, uh, like the base pair probability, and then improve the alignment. 
so like a between of these two. And so second one is how to measure the multiple sequence alignment accuracy. Um, so for that, I measured each pairwise alignment, each two sequences, and then get an uh, average of all the sequences. Um, so the question is about uh, so the input sequences are homologs and how to um, deal with the homologs with diverge uh, distance, right? Um, so in this study, I just using um, all the sequences within one family. So there may be some diverged ones, but I'm, um, I think the future direction is that by um, like calculating the subfamily. Like getting the distance among the homologs and then try to improve their structure prediction and also the alignment accuracy by um, doing subfamily and then merge together. So you're asking about, um, so in the alignment. Uh, uh, so the alignment is getting from um, like pairwise alignment and then merge them together progressively to give the multiple sequence alignment. Alignment independent. No, Re that's the, the question. Uh, so you're asking about is the alignment uh, independent? Um, so the pairwise alignment is independent from each other, but the, you know, at the step of um, getting from structure information, it's using the homologs information. So it's like a merging all the homolog inputs. So that's the better way comparing to independently aligning each two. Yeah, by using all of them will be more accurate. One more? So for the last one, you mentioned you're using shape here to perform a see a graph. Oh, yeah, due to the time limit. So here's the benchmark. So um, if using shape, um, in, in my program, so it can have an improvement. So these are structural accuracy for the sequence without shape data. Okay. Yeah. So with shape, where do you find shapes made to bigger things? Specific structures that it's helping you solve. Where is the where is the gain coming from? Uh, so that gain is coming from first of all improvement on the sequence with shape data. So there's an improvement on that structure prediction. And by using the home. Which ones, which parts of the structure are improved with shape? The specific structures and shape helps you resolve that otherwise your algorithm is failing on? Um, so I think that's uh, overall because by resulting this uh, experimental data, the structure tends to fall into some like a more stable structure by the calculation, but that's not actually the biological molecule, biological structure. So I think the experimental data can help with that um, because you know this thermodynamic methods tend to fold into the most stable ones. Yeah. And then by improving the structure prediction for sequence with shape, it can also help with others by this algorithm. All right, let's thank. Uh,